grace and peace and kingdom blessings to all. I am Bishop Michael Body, and I'm with you today because I have something that I would like to share, amen, with clergymen and clergywomen in the kingdom on today. Uh, we're living in a, in, a, in a season and we're living in a time where a lot of the ministries and churches have moved to the Episcopal uh, protocols, the Episcopal way of doing things, uh, apostolic dress, Episcopal dress and attire. So what I want to share with you on today, beloved, is how to put on your collar. That's what I want to talk about. How to put on the collar. And to do it smart, but not hard. Put it on smart, but not hard. And so we ask that you invite uh, and, and share with somebody. Bishop Michael Body is going to show you the easiest way to put on a clergy collar. If you're going to do it, you should do it right. Regardless if you're doing it through a reformation, through a church under the leadership of a bishop or apostle, uh, there should be some type of teaching and training. And in your teaching and training, before you put something on, you should know what you are putting on. And also you should know why you're putting it on, what it symbolizes. Amen. And when you put on a uh, clergy shirt, clergy blouse, it symbolizes sacrifice and servanthood. Amen. Jesus said, let the greatest among us be the servant. So I want to start off. I want to start off by showing you all this shirt. This shirt is the shirt that a licensed minister duly licensed by a pastor, church, or in some cases for para ministry, for marketplace ministries. Yes, this is the shirt or blouse that's worn by a licensed minister. So this one is kind of simple. It's, it's very simple. I'm going to show you the steps how to do it. And I want you to get it down uh, mm -hmm. real quick. All right. First, there is a tab. This is called a tab. There are several different types of tabs. This is one of the easiest tabs because this tab just goes straight across. This tab goes straight across. But let me tell you something about this. This tab itself even... Uh, it symbolizes a yoke. Now, we're not going to get into the teaching of the yoke on today, but when you are collared, when you are yoked, this does symbolize something. So before you put this on, understand that I'm putting on something uh, somewhat of a complete amen package. And I'm putting on something that symbolizes ministry. I'm also sacrificing, and this is servanthood. So let's look at this black shirt, a black shirt, and it's made purposely for those who have been licensed to the gospel ministry. Let me show you how quick that you can put the tab collar on a licensed minister's shirt. Now, if you are a licensed minister, you do not wear this. This is a pontiff collar or full collar. Some people call it a, a full collar, but actually it's a uh, pontiff collar and it has significant uh, origin and meaning. And so you be careful what you put on, what color. The basic civic attire color, amen, is black. Black is basic. 
This is only for if you are a ordained bishop, apostle, duly consecrated apostle, affirmed, uh, but not for a licensed minister. So let's get back to our shared licensed ministers, those who want to do it smart but not hard. You should have your tab. When you put your shirt on, let me show you how simple. You put one side in. You put the other side in. Very simply. And there it is. This is the way when you put your uh, clergy shirt which is part of civic attire, this is the way your shirt should look if it's properly worn. Now, let's go a step further. I'm going to borrow one of my pectoral crosses, which you won't wear this with that, but it probably would be more of a black cord or maybe a purple cord. And on it is a cross. The cross should never be seen. Nor should the shirt or blouse be worn without a jacket. Amen. You should have on a jacket when you wear civic attire. Amen. So what do you do with the cross? You take the cross and you put it in the left pocket. The left pocket. Why the left pocket? I'm, going to, I'm glad that you asked me why. So this is what you look like. This is what a licensed minister, without the gold, I didn't grab another collar, another uh, cord. I don't think I have one handy, but if I did, you, the goal is for a bishop or apostle. It is not for licensed or lay ministers. Silver as well is designated for those in certain giftings and assignments and offices but the correct way is to take the cross put it in your pocket and you notice that on the bishop and on the apostles and all the ecclesia our cords or our chains go on a slant into our pocket now the only time that you should see the cross is when you are wearing a vestment or some type of garment or robe or alb or any of that a cassock. But if you're not wearing those things, you should not have a cross showing. Again, that cross goes in your pocket. Let's put it in the pocket. And the reason it goes in the pocket is because in the pocket, it's on the left side, which covers up your heart. And the cross represents Jesus Christ. So when we put on our clergy shirt, whether we are ordained, whether we are licensed, we put our, and it won't be gold, for those that are licensed, it might be black or you might not wear one at all. It might be purple or a solid color that uh, symbolizes something to do with your uh, particular reformation, your church with uh, the adjutancy or something of that nature. And so you won't wear gold or silver. That's for the bishop, the apostle, and those in other areas of ministry. But this is what you should look like. Now, let's do it one more time. Let's do it one more time. It's so simple. You've been licensed. You're not ordained. Never put your, crop, your collar on in the sanctuary. It's a disrespect to the yoke. It's a disrespect to the collar. This is symbolic. This, car this carries... Uh, a spirit and it carries a origin that goes back thousands of years so we respect this so what should I do when I come into church 
Just put it on, no. Should I take it off in the church? No. You need to go in a private place. In the room in the church, you need to go in or the men's room or the ladies' room and have something to put this in. It's easy for the women that can put this in their pocket. But never walk into the sanctuary and ask somebody, put this on me. You, that is showing a lack of respect for what this stands for. So make sure that this is put away, that you go somewhere because this is sacred. So when you go into the bathroom, the ladies' room, where, uh, or a place where you're by yourself, now I put on my collar by putting in one side. I'm a licensed minister. And then, all right, let's put on the other side. All right, we did it. We did it. So licensed ministers. Too much, who much is given, much is required. So if you a licensed minister, let's do this right. Let's do it right. Don't put on something that you don't know what it is or why you got it on. So even before you purchase one, make sure that the person that's covering you, be it a pastor or whoever, a bishop, an apostle, whoever you are covered. Some of us are covered by nobody. And so it's important that you are covered. Do you have a pastor? Do you have a apostle, a bishop? And other than that, you're just out there like heathen. And so as we go into 2023, we want to help you. So this, we did give you the steps on how to put on a clergy shirt or blouse for a licensed minister. All right. Now, ordained minister or bishop like me. I'm a bishop. I'm a presider. Now, I have the color of your shirt, your clergy shirt, is contingent on your office. So the future is because I am a bishop. In the Lord's church. I also had red. Which symbolizes. That I am the presiding prelate. Of a reformation. Or fellowship. Amen. Of clergy and ecclesia. And so I have this in red. In this day and time. We're wearing all kind of colors. We don't even know what they symbolize. Brothers and sisters. Don't do that. Let's not do that. Moving into 23, let us be in order. Let us get the information we need. And there's several places you can get it. You can get it from your apostle, from your chief. And you don't have so many apostles. Some of y'all got three, four, five coverings. You don't need all the coverings. That's why you're confused. You need to get you a pastor and stay with that pastor. If you're part of a reformation, keep that covering. And so you won't be out here what I call bootleg and jack legged and jacked up. So now, this is my future. I want to show you something. I already got my cufflinks on it. Cufflinks are there. That's my other cufflink. So... I want, this is important to me. This is a sacred, whether you believe it or not, this is a sacred garment, just a shirt. Let me show you something on back of the shirt. Before you put on your collar, make sure that this pin, that this fastener is in the back. If it's not, before you put it on, you're going to have problems putting on your full collar or pontiff collar. The name of it is a pontiff, P-O-N-T-I-F-F -F collar. Some of us call it a full collar. When you get it in the package, it's going to come like this. 
So some people have a tendency to put these fasteners, they take the fastener and they'll put it on the collar. It does not go on the collar. Take your first fastener, make sure that it's in the back. of your clergy shirt. This is for ordained ministers, bishops, apostles, overseers, prophets. All right. So now when you turn it around, this is the front. There should be nothing. All right. I'm a button, the highest button, but I want you to look. Notice there's nothing at the top, but at the back, there's a fastener. All right. Let's look at me. I have on a black full clergy for a uh, Pontus collar. There's no nothing up top, but look at the back. There's also a fastener. And if you follow these simple steps, you can put on your collar smart and not heart. Amen. Smart and not heart. And that's what I'm going to show you all. All right. Your collar. This fastener should already be on your collar. If the fastener is not already on your collar, you're going to have problems. Two things I want you all to remember. When you get ready to get to the church and you're getting ready to change, your fastener should be on the back of your shirt. The other fastener should be in the inside of your pontiff full collar. All right, watch these simple steps. So how do I do it, uh, Bishop Body? You take this collar and you hold it in front of you. See that? And when you fold it, you're going to see, when you hold it, you're going to see there's that fastener. The first thing you do is take one side, the collar is on, one side. Now you have the second side. Make sure you get it a, a half a size larger, a half an inch larger, or some of us need more than that. Look like I needed an inch. <laughs> but anyway, it'll go on. We're going to get it on. All right. So now, this the way your collar should look. Your collar should be, have this look because you have attached the front. So the rest of it is smart and not hard. So what you do, you take this side, fasten it. There's only one side left. You fasten it. And so now, this is the simple way to put on a full collar without help. You don't need nobody. Here, help me put this. I need you to help me put, put my collar on, preacher. Help me put. No, you don't need help. It's something that you can do smart and not hard in a number of seconds. So I want you to look at the back, how it is fastened. Smart and not hard. All right. Now, watch this. Take it off. That side off. That side off. Unfasten this side. And do you see? So now... Do not take your collar off in the sanctuary. Do not take this sacred collar off in front of other people. Take your sick. If you can't afford a case, they do have cases. Get you a, a Ziploc sandwich bag and put, your, put it up. Go in a bathroom or an area where you can show that this is sacred that it has origin, that it has meaning, and that you have respect for wearing it. 
I won't get into all the meaning of this yoke, this collar, but I want you to know, since we're going to wear we in the day up collars and, and investments and civic attire, let's do it right. Know the right colors. I'm not going to give the colors today. So now, I'm going to show you again how fast you should be able to put this on. Let's go. Side one, the one. That's it. Simple. Simple. And guess what? It was smart and not hard. So I just wanted to show that to you all to show you how simple it is. I will be coming and showing as me as the uh, presiding prelate and chief apostle of Hope Covenant Kingdom Fellowship family of churches. We need to share these teachings with our fellow brothers and sisters in the gospel and uh, in the kingdom because we got a lot of folks out here we doing things any kind of way. In 2023, God has given me the thing, the theme, let's take the church back to church. If we, whatever you're going to do, do it in excellence. Amen. So this is the way this goes. If you missed it, this is only for a licensed minister. If you are not ordained, don't put this on. You have no business with it on. And I'm going to go a step further. Now watch this. This is my bishop. I am a bishop. So I wear this color. It's fuchsia or red purple color. And you shouldn't have this on if you're not a bishop. Now, some reformations, they vary in different colors for bishops and apostles. Uh, so, But at least find out from your presider, from your chief apostle. I am presider and chief apostle. Now, red you should not wear. Red is restricted for presiders. Red, if you're not the presiding, when I preside, I wear the red. I don't even wear my, my uh, red and scarlet when I'm not presiding. So that I won't never overdress. Y'all got that? A lot of y'all do it. You shouldn't. I don't overdress nobody in their house. So when I go to Trotter, when I go to whoever I go to, any bishops, I'm wearing this. Now, when you come to Hope Company Kingdom Fellowship stuff, I have red. Because red represents presiding bishop or primate. And it also red or scarlet also represents chief apostle. So yes, a chief apostle or a presiding bishop. And I just happen to be both. And if you don't understand it, you can call me and explain it to you. That's all right with you. <laughs> so so I, I am both of them. But even so, that does not allow me not to wear uh, the proper shirt, nor not to wear the proper uh, vestments. So... Uh, so make sure those of you wearing red don't get your feelings hurt they were strict back in the day and they go off on you for that but we don't want to go off on folks you ought to want to be in order don't put this on you're not a bishop and don't wear stuff that you don't know what it is and so I want to thank you all for tuning in with me I hope I helped somebody today. Now you know how simple it is. And to those ministers that don't wear collars, let me explain this to you. 
Somebody said, but in college, they're doing that. That's that, Those are uh, for Catholic folks. They're not for Catholic folks. The Joint College of Bishops in, in Ohio, under the leadership at that time of, of uh, Bishop Delano Ellis, God gave him the vision for the African-American uh, church. Amen. African-American Pentecostal church and gave him this so that the black church would have a order, something black folks don't usually like, but a lot of us do. And I thank God for him and he rest in peace. So let's keep this going the way it's supposed to be. Let us not make a shame of the teaching that we have gotten from the Episcopality, from the joint house of bishops, and even from the origin of wearing vestments and coats and cloaks and know when to wear it, know when not to wear it. So to other pastors and ministers, yes, you may wear this if you are ordained. All it means is I am a ordained minister, pastor. If you are not ordained, please don't put it on. Instead, if you are ordained, you may wear this. Red, no. Blue, no. Unless you've been designated black. Ladies and gentlemen. So, I want to thank you all for tuning in with Bishop Michael Body. Amen. Every once in a while, I try to put things out for the kingdom because we are a kingdom ministry, perfecting excellence in ministry. And so, in doing so, we want to be a blessing to the kingdom of God. So we want to be in order, amen, for the, why? Because he called some to be apostles to some prophets, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry, the edifying of the body of the Christ. And then look at the next verse. It says, until we come into the unity of of the faith. We have missed that part. Let's come back into the unity of the faith and that of a perfect church without a spot or a man or a blemish. That's what we have to do. God is looking for us to be that church that he's calling for in its last and evil day. And so I thank you for tuning in. And remember, it was so easy to put on and it's so easy to take off. God bless everybody that tuned in. It's off. It's on. Two more to go. Learn to do it smart but not hard. And you don't need no adjutant to put no collar on. You can do that yourself. That's a few steps. But it's nice if you have one. There's nothing wrong with it. Always keep this in the back of your shirt. And it will always be very simple to put on. Your shirt should have this fastener already there. As we close out, remember Bishop Body said that your collar, your pontiff, your full collar should already have this fastener. And if it's there, it's simple. 
You know what? I came up in Holy Trinity Missionary Baptist Church, and I was taught to love ministry and ministers. And I love all y'all. And that's why I want to be able to share everything that God has blessed and given me. I want to give it to you so you can glean from it and that you be blessed and God be glorified. God bless you.